It's November 9th, 1995. The Chicago Bulls are facing the Cleveland Cavaliers just a few games into their historic 72-win season. It's the beginning of Michael Jordan's first full season back after his retirement in 1993, and the Air Jordan 11s were just released for the very first time, one of the most coveted basketball shoes ever made. To get your hands on a pair of 11s today, you'll have to pay a hefty price, anywhere from $300 to $500. But these are just the re-releases of the original shoe. To get your hands on a pair of the OG 1995 Air Jordan 11 Concords, you'll need to part ways with about $1,000. Now, if you're an absolute madman and you have more money than you even know what to do with, you can buy these game-worn, signed Air Jordan 11 Concords from 1995. An actual piece of basketball and sneaker history can be all yours for the small price of $56,000. Far from the original price tag of just $125. You see, these shoes have a unanimous approval rating. Everyone loves them. From Kobe Bryant, to Luka Doncic, to the shoe connoisseur himself, PJ Tucker, in every iteration and color, the 11s are on the Mount Rushmore of basketball kicks. From the baseball diamond, to the football field, to the golf course, these shoes have transcended basketball itself. But it goes even deeper than that. Even at the time, while Jordan was still in the league, winning championships, other NBA players were wearing this shoe. Even Michael Jordan's opponents were wearing the 11s while guarding Michael himself. Everyone needed a pair of the Air Jordan 11s. Well, everyone except this guy. This ordinary, very much 90s looking basketball fan, sitting courtside at that Bulls Cavaliers matchup in 1995. The singular individual on earth that didn't like the 11s. In fact, this man disliked the shoes so much, he actually told Michael Jordan he didn't like them. And he did it right to his face. But let's back this up for a moment. This Bulls-Cavs matchup was just the fourth game of the season, Michael coming off of a relatively bad performance against the Celtics, scoring just 15 points earlier that same week. This is also his first week back on the court after losing to the Magic in the second round of the playoffs in the previous season. Michael was back, but for a brief period, fans didn't know if they would ever see THE Michael Jordan again, or just the baseball-playing, movie-making Michael Jordan. Just the idea of a watered-down MJ was a dream come true for most of the league, especially for Cavaliers fans. Unfortunately for these fans, and this man in particular, this dream quickly became a nightmare. Now, the Cavaliers-Bulls rivalry wasn't really much of a rivalry at all. Leading up to the 1995 season, the Cavaliers hadn't beaten Michael in two years. At this point, the people of Cleveland were just happy Jordan was in town, except in their previous matchup. The Cavaliers lead by one, and Chicago trying to figure out a way to get the ball in the hands of Michael Jordan. I don't know why Chris Mills is even up on Scottie Pippen, although the inbound passer is very dangerous. He should be off in a passing lane somewhere where Michael Jordan's going to go. Next foul will put the Cavs over the number. Here is Jordan with the It does not happen here this afternoon. A one-point victory for the Cavs coming at the hands of a rare missed potential game winner from Michael himself. Cavs fans were shocked and beaming with newfound confidence, which leads us to this eventful matchup in November of 95. This game was set to be a good one. Jordan prepared to redeem himself of the missed game winner and bury the Cavs once again. The Cavaliers prepared to do everything in their power to stop him. In the NBA and Michael Jordan Everybody bigger, talks about, yeah, he's bigger. He played basketball all summer long with Chris Mills out uh, in a, a special gym that they built for him out on the set uh, in Hollywood, California. So Jordan's committed this year, and that's probably not good news for the rest of the NBA. A triangle offense going to work from Chicago right away. Jordan's going to lift. Bobby swooped it to the hoop of the left hand. Spins has lost it. Jordan threw a no look to him over his head. That's one reason why they're 3-0, and and everybody thinks they got a chance to take it again. Out here as an official. Huh? Michael Jordan. Then along with Phils, Mills, Ferry, and Michael Cage. Jordan with an open look at it, had it rattle on him. Michael now just 3-10. of Jordan with that line drive three, and Jordan showed it, and then home, and Wendington couldn't handle it. Now, how many times have we seen that through the course of Chicago Bull history with Jordan's teammates not being able to deal with his dishes? 
With over half the game played and just 5 minutes left in the third quarter, Michael is once again having a bad night against the Cavs. They're doubling him at every available opportunity, forcing him into bad jumpers. With just 17 minutes left in the game, Michael has just 11 points on 5 for 14 from the field. The Cavaliers are up by 3, on their way to their second straight win against the Bulls. Michael just wasn't feeling it, and the Cavs were well on their way to winning this game. Until he happened. After the half, Michael with another subpar performance unfolding, this Cavs fan begins to feel dangerous, a bit cocky. So he starts to do something that only a few men have dared to do. He talks trash to Michael Jordan. Remember those Concord 11s we spoke about? The $56,000 pair of shoes? Well, these are those shoes. And this guy can't stand them so much that he went out of his way to say this. Now, in hindsight, we can all look at this clip and know this man just committed one of the deadly basketball sins of trash-talking Michael Jordan. But this guy is a Cavaliers fan. He is sick of Michael Jordan. Does he really hate the shoes? I mean, it's not like he couldn't afford them. The man is sitting courtside at an NBA game. Maybe he really is the only man alive who doesn't like the 11s. Or maybe, deep down, he's MJ's biggest fan, and he saw the opportunity to talk some smack to the GOAT, and he took it. But at what cost? He made the argue now. Michael Jordan right there. Yeah. Oh, shit, push! Simpkins on the Harper miss, tipped it into Jordan's hands, and they have problems. Jordan will lift and lace the three a little bit, tied at 67. Jordan again going triple, and look out now, he's home run twice. That's right, they're forgetting about Michael. Rose up and missed the jumper. Two coach, another opportunity. Michael for three, count it. Oh my. In order for him to challenge Orlando, we saw what Indiana's bench is here. And they're going to need him too. Michael Jordan fading away and busting it, and then with a look at the Cavalier bench after he bottomed it out. 50 seconds, his 13 point lead. He and his Bulls will go to 4 0. Michael Jordan buries another three. He only had six in the first half, but my, how he has heated it. In the second, 16 points. He's hit a head matchup. It's too strong for both ball clubs. Make it 27 now. The 24 second clock. Bobby fills with 26. Jordan with some hang time to fly it home. After scoring just six points in the first half and hearing enough out of the sideline heckler, Michael Jordan flipped the switch and took it personally, scoring 23 points in the second half, knocking down shot after shot. It's been told that the game itself sometimes wasn't enough to get Michael fully engaged. He would oftentimes manufacture stories that would motivate him to take his game to another level. This is what us normal people would call a psychopath. But we're not Michael Jordan. Getting back at the Cavaliers after missing a game-winning shot to break a two-year winning streak? Nah. Doing everything in your power to prove to the random sideline heckler that you are the GOAT and your shoes are awesome? Yes. After being down three points in the middle of the third quarter, the Bulls were propelled to an 18-point victory thanks to Michael's scoring barrage. The Cavaliers literally lost this game because of this guy. After going berserk in the fourth and sealing the victory, Mike heads to the bench in the final moments of the game. Now, pay attention to where he looks before he sits down. Right at our friend, the heckler. And the icing on the cake? A quick gesture to remind the guy to never step out of line again. I mean, this is just embarrassing. Mike just disassembled your whole team purely out of spite, then shushed you like a three-year-old in front of 15,000 people. You might as well enter witness protection at this point. The Cavaliers played the Bulls three more times that season and got washed every single time. Their best shot to beat the Bulls was in that November matchup, and they probably would have beat the Bulls if this guy didn't make fun of Michael in his shoes. The irony? These shoes might just be the most sold basketball shoes of all time. Widely regarded as the best basketball shoes ever, breaking Nike's sales records again and again and again. Earlier this year, 26 years after they were originally released, the Air Jordan 11 Jubilees were the biggest drop of the year. This guy's comment about Mike being better in his old shoes was also wrong. Since later that season, Mike went on to win the scoring title, win MVP, led the Bulls to an NBA record 72 wins, won the NBA championship, and won finals MVP 
in those shoes. Mr. Heckler was wrong about the shoes, he was wrong about Michael, and his biggest mistake of all, he was dead wrong about trash talking the goat. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.